Coach, welcome to this special Saturday edition of the NFL on EA Sports. Straight ahead, we've got a terrific matchup on tap between the Atlanta Falcons and the Minnesota Vikings. With that, we send you up to U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis, standing by our commentators, Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. And we find ourselves at the stadium that played host to Super Bowl 52, the wondrous U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. The scene a short time ago, this crowd decked out in purple, and they were in full roar as their guys burst out of the locker room. We're ready for football, folks, as the Vikings get set to do battle with the Atlanta Falcons. Brandon Gunn and Charles Davis with you from our broadcast perch. And Charles, as we get this thing started, what are you going to be keeping your eye on? Special teams. Field position is always a big determiner in a ball game. Who sets their offense up for success the best? That team will win the game. The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. So here come the Falcons now to get the football for the first time. And a glance here at the man calling the plays under center, their 6'4 quarterback. And what I enjoyed in preparing for this game was talking not just with the coaching staff, but with him as well. And I found it interesting that the coaching staff sees him one way, and he sees himself an entirely different way. Yeah, one thing he said he's always working on, he's, we know he's not bad at this, but his footwork right, always wants to improve that, and that's something he's going to focus on here. And what was so funny, what the offensive coordinator say right off the top, he's got great footwork. Love his footwork. So this guy is never satisfied. Holding offense. So on the big tight end, Still first down. each and every year, we talk about very few tight ends coming into the league that are polished blockers or asked to do it a lot in college. So it's a constant struggle and a constant fight to learn how to do it without holding. Let's go. They'll look to throw. Throws a quick hit on the slant. That's complete. So a nice job to break the one tackle, but not much daylight after that as he's brought down. Five yards on the catch there brings up second down. And the Buffet Boys, the O-line, hopefully they're ready today. Listen, you got to feed them first. But if you do, you usually get a great product out on the field. And when they play well, the quarterback can't wait to feed them afterwards. They'll drop the throw. Firing quickly here, and that's complete. And the ball is knocked out, and the Vikings pick up the football. And his guys are going to take over at the 31-yard line. The psychology of the game never ceases to amaze me because you would think there would never be a fumble from what we hear from coaches all the time, right? And how much they practice not fumbling. Practice it, preach it, talk about it all the time. You would think no one would ever turn it over. Yet they are humans out there running around. And we just saw another one. Opportunistic by the defense. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. Line of scrimmage, the 31 now on first and 10. And they'll go on the ground. And he'll get about three as he's brought down to the 28. What's the old expression? Three yards in a cloud of dust? In this case, it's dust-covered pellets. It's no longer that old grass that we used to play on right and chew it up. Now we've got that artificial surface. You see the pellets go up. Still a nice play by the defense. They'll set up to throw. And nearly an interception here on their opening drive. But instead, third down. The turnover put them in great field position. They don't want to squander it with third down coming up. No, not at all. And you know what else you do? 
you make your defense mad. Yeah. They got you the football, gave you a great opportunity. You got to cash in and get some points. In danger of squandering their great field position as they come up on a third and seven. Back to throw. And he'll head out of bounds inside the 10. Mark it down at the 9. They're able to convert on third down, and that sets up a first and goal. After getting that turnover on the first drive of the game, you'd hate to just stall out the momentum, go three and out. They're able to avoid that there. And we talk about complimentary football all the time, but I think it's a little bit deeper than that. Defense went out, forced a turnover, gave the ball to the offense. It's now the offense's responsibility to pay that off for them to show respect to them. Hey, you guys got some turnover. We appreciate it. They want to continue their drive. And the head coach reaches for the red flag, tosses it down on the field. He wants a challenge here. Well, he challenged the play. It did not pay off. And that means he lost a timeout in that challenge. And as a coach, you hate that. Don't know if you took the advice of the player. You threw it yourself, but it didn't go your way. At the end of the day, it all comes back to the head coach. He has the final determination on whether to actually challenge the player or not. In this case, it didn't pay off for him. And that's got to be so heartbreaking. You throw that flag, you probably feel really confident. And then all of a sudden, boom, you lose the challenge. Yeah, when you take a look at it, you're throwing that flag because you believe you're going to be right. And when it comes back the other way, you have to regroup. And the ball smack dab on the five-yard line. Here's second and goal. Cut. And they'll lose yardage here. They go backwards to the 13-yard line. That's a loss of eight yards there to bring up third. Following the sack, they go from the 13 on third and goal. Play action fake. They'll look to throw. He's got his man. It's taken in for a Viking touchdown. In for the score. And the Vikings have taken a first quarter lead. So a tiptoe catch back of the end zone, so tough to do, but he made it look pretty easy. Certainly did, and the back of the end zone is treated the same way as the sideline. You have to get your feet down in bounds for it to count as a catch. How about the backgrounds of some of these guys, though? Did they work on it? Maybe some of them were ballet, some dance, who knows? Yeah, you and I were talking the other day. I remember one of my favorite kid shows growing up. I don't know that I want to name it, but... Guys like Lynn Swan, they used to be on there showing their ballet skills. And you have to remember when they were kids and their parents would tell them to take the ballet classes, you know they were fighting them like crazy. But right now they're saying, thanks, Mom. <laughs> It took them an extra look, but they found out it is a touchdown indeed. The official says this one counts. No going for two. They'll kick the point after. The extra point splits the uprights, and it's now a 7-0 game. That time, a six-play drive, and it's polished off by a Viking score. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. This is taken about seven yards deep. 
And no run back here. This will be a touchback, and it comes out to the 25-yard line. Now the Falcons offense, they get ready to head back out here. And last time, not only the turnover, but that turned into six points. They got to make up for that here. We always hear about empty possessions, but some are worse than others. You can have an empty possession, pump the ball away, get yourself set to play defense, but when you turn it over, it changes momentum, and when they take it down to and punch it in on you, that's a bad possession all the way around. Yeah, but you're hungry to get back out there, aren't you? You better be, because otherwise, it's going to be a long day for you. And throwing to start the drive, but that one incomplete. Partner, your thoughts on this D-line? I love a unit that can control the run and get after the passer. This is an all-around terrific defensive front. Hard to move the ball against them on the ground, and then when you want to throw it, look out. Here they come after the quarterback. Line of scrimmage, again the 25, second and 10. Play action. They'll throw. Blitz coming and down he goes. Brandon, if I'm an offensive coordinator and I see an all-out rush like that, I file it away because I'm going to use their aggressiveness against them as this game goes on. I'm going to hit them with a screen soon. Intercepted. Picked off at the 30. And they're going to be set up in the red zone at the 15. That interception sets them up beautifully already in the red zone. And you can hear it all the way up here. Oski, Oski, everyone turn to block, find a spot. And now they're set up inside the red zone for their offense. Offense now heading out to take over. Now they'll be looking to duplicate the efforts of drive number one that resulted in seven points in the seven zip lead. Well, you know how much I enjoy horse racing, right? Looks like they caught a flyer out of the gate, as they would say when you're running the big time races. It means they get out to a fast start. They're setting the pace, making the other team chase now. Let's go! And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And nothing doing. He's immediately taken down at the line of scrimmage. No gain on the play. It'll be second down. Then he got off the end there very quickly to make that play. Yeah, it was almost like the bullet train, wasn't it? I mean, just zoom. Quick, quick, quick. And what a terrific play, holding them to no gain. Here we go. Back to throw now on second and ten. Escaping the pressure right. Oh, what a move. Touchdown, Minnesota. He hit him earlier in this first quarter with his arm. Now he does it with his legs. Right now, he's one of those stat stuffers that you see on the basketball court. You know, the guy with points, rebounds, assists, steals. One with the arm, one with the legs. Let's see if you can continue this pace. And sending out the reminder that, yeah, look, I'm known for having an arm, but I can do it with the legs on occasion when I need to. Extra point forthcoming. right down the middle and that'll make the score 14 to zip well that drive started with not a whole lot of real estate in front of them in plus territory excellent field position two plays later pay dirt set now to kick this one away and off it goes Here he is. 
is the man taking the snaps under center, heading out for the next possession. And he'll look to rebound from the early interception that led to six points the other way. And when he threw the interception and he had to come to the sideline, I guarantee his first thought wasn't about the interception itself, but what could result. And I know he was thinking to himself, come on, defense, bail me out. Well, they weren't able to in this situation. Now he's got to go out and atone for it himself, but he can't force things. And he's able to plow forward up to about the 29, just shy of the 30. I call that play a success. A nice inside run sets up a very manageable second down, a very solid gain on that play. Second and six, just inside the 30. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And an alley to run, and it's a fumble. Oh, a call it luck or skill, whatever the case is, they're feeling good about just keeping the football there. Yeah, the biggest thing that they're calling it now, our ball. <laughs> I mean, they don't care if it was luck or skill. Boy, the panic that jumps up in your chest when that ball's on the ground, whether you get it or your teammate gets it, just as long as you maintain possession, that's all you're looking for. Let's go! Boom, and they'll go with the ground attack here. And he's going to take this one up only to about the 44-yard line. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, this big defensive lineman will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. Now let's go! And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And he's got it across the midfield stripe and into Viking territory. And he's able to get most of what he needed on the carry there. Seven yards on the gain, and it's third and two now. And that's the kind of run that gets everyone excited on offense. And you know, oftentimes the guys who carry the ball are the ones in the huddle doing the chirping. Right now, I think it's the offensive line telling them, run it again. We are right there about to break a big one. And they'll run it here. And that play goes nowhere. Taken down, losing yardage at the 50, right at midfield. It'll be a loss of one, and it'll be fourth down. I know when I was a kid, I always got real excited when I saw those lateral-type runs. But the best backs that made it happen, they put a foot in the ground and just go. That didn't happen there. That play got swallowed up. The Falcons send out their punter as he should be able to pin him back deep here with his first punt. And out now come the Vikings. And right now they're saying, hey, let's keep this going. Two drives, two touchdowns. Yeah, can't ask for a better start than that, can you? I mean, this is the way you practice it. This is the way you rehearse it. But right now, the play calling, they're locked in really well. And on the ground they go with a running back. And that one blown up quickly as he's going to be stopped before he could even get started. Call it a loss of two on the play. And it'll be second and 12. A right, quick observation, Brandon, because early on in this game, I'm seeing linebackers playing with their noses close to the line of scrimmage. And my guess is the wheels are turning on that other sideline. As a play caller, you're filing that away right now, aren't you? Yeah, you're trying to find that opportunity later on when you can play action them or stick something to them between the second and the third level. So the opening play of the drive goes backwards. Now they'll come up on second and 12. And incomplete there, a nice hit, jars the ball free and brings up third down. It's a lot of contact going on there, and in the end, unable to keep two hands on the football and bring it into his body. Everything looked pretty good until the finish. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Complete on the 
deep ball. It's a great job by this secondary. When I watch them, they remind me of elite defenders on a basketball court, right? They want to contest each and every pass. Great contest on third down to bring up fourth. The Vikings send out their punter as he's on to punt for the first time tonight. Taken in at the 22. 12 yards on the return that time. And the Falcons will be taking over first and 10. The fourth down run successful. Now they look to pay it off on first down. took a shot there on what will turn out to be the final play of this first quarter. One quarter in the books. 14-0 is our score. We're back to Minneapolis in just a moment. The NFL on EA Sports is fueled by Gatorade, the sports fuel company. Alongside Charles Davis, Brandon Gordon, it's the Falcons in possession to begin quarter number two. They've got it second and ten to start things out. From the 34, they'll come to the line on second and ten. Here we go now. Blue now he'll look to throw here on second and ten. And this time he's got the hookup. It's complete. And he'll be taken down, but not before he works it past the 50. 17 yards on the pickup there. The drive will continue. It's a first down. Well, from an offense's perspective, that sure was pretty because the corner route is extremely difficult to defend from my perspective. What we just saw there, is that sort of the evolution of the tight end position? Yeah, I think it is because more and more, tight ends are being treated like wide receivers. These are some agile players who can make a play in any spot on the field. Now a handoff looking right. And he's got it across the midfield strike and into Viking territory. It's a pickup of four and it'll bring up second down. When we see those runs to the perimeter, when we see those runs to the edge, we think about big breakers, don't we? In this case, it was a modest game, but it does open up possibilities here on second down. Now they try the right side here. And they go backwards here, losing yardage back at the 48-yard line. It'll be a loss of a full three yards there, and it also brings up third down. I like the strategy. Extra tight ends, extra beef. They want to run the football, but that means they probably want to run it inside. If you get strung out on the perimeter, you're in peril. Yeah, we saw the result, negative yardage. And on third down, a nickel formation here defensively. Someone's been up to the task so far in this game. They are already up a couple of scores, Brandon, and guess what? I think they're just going to pin their ears back now and get upfield and get after the quarterback. Been such an impressive first half to get that lead. The Falcons send out their punter as he'll kick it away for the second time. He'll return it from the six. It'll be a 47-yard punt with a net of 40 following a seven-yard return. And the Vikings will be backed up deep to begin their drive as they take over first and 10. And the Vikings now heading on to the field. They've got the lead. Last time had to punt it, though. What's the key to this drive? I think it's leverage. Ah, the leverage. big guys up front. You know the motivational speech on the sideline is, guys, give us an opportunity. Protect the passer, create space for our runners, and let's go ahead and get these guys. Low man wins. Let's go do it on this drive. <laughs> we'll watch that leverage on this drive. And they'll go on the ground. Only able to make it to the 15 after the nice move. 
two yards on the carry there. It'll be second down. They tried a quick hitter inside, but that one was swallowed up because what they're hoping, those big defensive linemen will take the bait and move laterally and open up a crease that they can run through. Didn't happen on that play. pressure on him, but he's able to flush out to his right to try and evade people. On the run, had to get on his horse. Still accurately throws a nice pass for a first down. So from the 36 now, first and 10. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And he'll grab a gain of five out of this up to the 41-yard line. Go, 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 run, run, run. Despite the blitz, they're still able to pick up a nice, solid gain. The disadvantage of blitzing often alters the normal spacing and run fits and leaves creases like they were able to exploit right there. I know our vantage point might be a little bit better way up here, but that looked like an ill-advised throw to me. I didn't see anything open, and this play just didn't look right from the beginning. It did not. I thought he might get outside and just chuck it away. Dangerous pass, incomplete. The Vikings on third down. They've been okay, two for three thus far. This will be third and five. Let's go! And incomplete, a disappointing drop there defensively by the rookie. And now fourth down. You're down two touchdowns. You just know defensively, you absolutely have to come up with a big play. That nearly was one right there. Looked over at the sideline immediately after the drop and just saw the dejection. They felt it. They thought he had it. Unfortunately, couldn't come up with it. The Vikings send out their punter as he'll punt it away for the second time. He gets this one away, and boy, it's another boomer. Now out comes their leader and the captain of this offense back onto the field. He's got to dig deep here, doesn't he? Team's losing. He's not playing well either. And they always tell you, don't press. You'll make things a little bit worse. But in this particular situation, you try and heighten your play a little bit. So far, he's thrown one interception. He wants to balance that off with at least one touchdown pass in order to get his team back moving forward. And nearly picked off. Surprising to see a defender of his caliber let it get away. But it does get away in its second down. This defense has been very disruptive early on as they force another one to go awry. Seems to be the front and the back end. Pass rush, they've been able to get home, and they're taking the ball away in coverage as well. I love how you put it together. The front and back working in sync, only way to play good defense. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. And they'll go with the ground attack here. And he'll find a little space. He gets this up near the 10. Call it a gain of four, and it'll leave him with a third down and six to go. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big-time play? All right, here we go. Blue lining! Blue lining! Ah! On third down, he'll drop to throw. Wide open receiver complete. Now the ball comes loose, and this belongs to the Vikings. Well, he did what he's known for. He made the catch, then he turned into a runner, took the contact, and coughed it up. And all I remember as a player, when they catch the ball, when those acrobatic guys catch it, you have to make them pay sometimes. You have to put it on them, 
Big tackle, knock the ball free. Anything you can do to slow them down. Now the Vikings offense works their way back onto the field. They were forced to punt last time, and I doubt sincerely that they'll have to punt here because they're gifted with terrific field position. I don't even want to think about the idea that they would end up punting starting with this type of field position. Neither do they. Great starting spot, great opportunity to run your full playbook. They want to take a shot here, they can go ahead and do it. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And able to get about three as he's taken down right at the 20. Yeah, baby. Yeah. Two minutes to play here in the first half. More from Minneapolis after this. We remind you that coming up at halftime, we'll pay a visit to Jonathan Coachman. He's in Orlando, and he'll have our EA Sports halftime report. to him just inside the 15-yard line. And even after that fancy footwork, we saw a good job defensively to recover. And after that type of a run, there's some talking going on down on the field, but it's not trash talking. The guy who just carried the ball, he's going back and telling his offensive line, great job, keep it up, and we'll break that one soon. The offense on third down tonight, they've hit two for four thus far. They're looking at third in the nose of the football. Let's go! They'll run it now out of the gun. Oh, and he will score! Touchdown, Vikings! A great play there! A 13-yard touchdown run! And the Vikings are going to add on to their lead. And while no one on the offensive line will get the six points next to their name, they should be credited with this one. Tremendous blocking to get the runner into the end zone. Extra point attempt to come here. Extra point right down the middle. And it's now 21 to nothing. So they only needed three plays on that drive. And it's capped off by a 13-yard touchdown run. the kickoff unit as they run up and send this one away. Here are the Falcons as their offense heads back onto the field. And some dangerous territory. You're already down three scores. A three and out here or an inability to put any points up. This one might be over by half. Yeah, and what you also have to guard against is calling every play for a big shot downfield. You know, thinking you're going to get all these points back on one drive. You're not. And last Check. time I looked, it's still the first half. I'm not saying you have ultimate patience here, but you also don't have to go ahead and force everything either. They'll come out throwing here on first down. And oh, he coughed it up. And this belongs to the Vikings. So after that sequence... If we're watching both teams' defenses, didn't it feel like a revolving door? One's on, they think they're off for a while. The other has to come on, they think they're on for a while. Then they're off, here comes the other one. Just kept turning the ball over. They've got to cut that out. The Vikings offense now, they get ready to head back on the field. And for them, a touchdown their last go around. Obviously, they'll be hoping to do that again. And when you start plotting for this drive, when you start thinking to yourself, okay, what are we going to do? You don't go away from what you did before because that worked. 
but you have to be prepared for wrinkles and counters because you know they'll make some adjustments. Good starting field position for the Vikings as they have it first and ten. And on the ground they go with a running back. And he's over midfield and into Falcon territory. It's a six-yard gain on the ground, and that'll make it second and four. He did have the touchdown run earlier, but not a heck of a lot more than that throughout this game. No, not at all. In fact, I would say that this defense has done as good of a job on him as they have on any runner in recent memory. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. The gain of four that time as the drive continues. Well, that was a unit that understood exactly where the first down marker was, handed it to their guy who could run it, created some space, and he got there. a chance for one more quick play and then another timeout if they hurry. We'll see. And we're back. The offense had a chance to talk things over. We'll see what they come up with here on this next play. just shy of the five at the six. So we've reached halftime here in Minnesota with the Vikings on top. As we'll send you down to Orlando, we check in with Jonathan Coachman for our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome, everyone, to this abridged version of the EA Sports Halftime Report. This one is maybe not exactly in the bag yet, but there is definitely a big mountain to climb in this third quarter. The teams are already back out there, so let's not waste any time as we'll turn it back over to Brandon God. The Vikings have to like their position. They've got the lead. They get this football as well as we are back and underway for the second half. This fielded a few yards into the end zone. They'll bring it back to just about the 25. Call it the 24-yard line. Now come the Vikings. They'll have it first on offense as we begin the third. They built a good first half lead. Now they have a chance to add on to it. And what I'm thinking is that the offensive staff spent the entire halftime just working with them on, here's what we think they're going to do to attack us in the second half. Nice first half that we've had, guys, but be prepared for some change-ups. We're going to see them when we kick it off in the second half. See how they handle any adjustments that might be made defensively. Now a handoff looking right. Look at the spin. Balance. And he'll be taken down, but not before they work it across midfield. All told, it's an even 30 and a first down. Boy, he does it at a high level, doesn't he? Because when I watch him, I think of his vision. Straight ahead, peripheral. Also has that sense of where holes are going to be before they actually open. I think that helps set him apart from many of the other backs in the league. So the line of scrimmage moves all the way across the 50 now as they come up first and 10. Come on, let's go! Now on first down, he'll drop to throw it. And he knocks the ball away, and it falls incomplete. 
Well, this at least is the right idea. I think they've got to get the tight end more involved. He had just one target in the first half, incomplete. Now incomplete here with the first target in the second half. Yeah, should not stop them at all from going back to him, though. Find him. Find him. After the incomplete pass, here now is second and ten. Looking to throw. Dancing to his left. Dances by him. And he'll be brought down, it looks like, right at the 40. Give him seven there on the tuck and run, and they're in better shape now for third. In need of a conversion on third down. They had the big play to start the drive. Not much sense. Come on, let's go. And they'll go on the ground. Last stop. Last stop. The offense is not leaving the field. They're going to stay out and go for it on fourth and three. Let's go! From the shotgun, he'll look to throw. Steps away to his left. And they'll wind up getting this one all the way down inside the 20. 21 yards there. A big play on fourth down. On that play, as you saw the route start to develop downfield, I got the sense that maybe the run would set up for him, and he took full advantage of it and got a big gain on a busted play. zone and the safeties have less ground to cover you'd better be quick with your delivery not much space to get a ball in there yeah when that field shrinks with those safeties it's almost like there's a couple extra defenders out there right it certainly is they end up taking up extra space just because there's not enough space for receivers to run through an incomplete pass on first down that leads to a second and ten He'll look to throw. And he's got it. And he will score. Touchdown, Vikings. Tyler Conklin, an 18-yard touchdown grab. And the Vikings find a way to stretch their lead. A lot of times when you take a tight end in later rounds, you're doing it with a little bit of hope, some potential. But not so with this guy. They believe he can really make an impact in the red zone. And he definitely makes good on that faith right there. Point after here, coming up. The extra point splits the uprights, and it is 28-0. So that winds up a seven-play drive all told, and it all culminates in a touchdown for Minnesota.
The kickoff team on the field now as they will send this one away. Here comes the Falcons offense. It's their first possession of the second half now. They're down in this game. A chance for the offense, though, to put something on the board, get some momentum here in half two. Try and get things kick-started for them. And you know at the half, they discussed how they were going to get that done. This is where scripting comes into play a lot how, of the how time. How many plays do you script coming out of the second half? Most, most of the time in the first half, you're scripting 12 to And he loses the football a second time. So they escape, so to speak, maintaining the football. Defensively, though, opportunity miss. It definitely was because that's all defenses talk about, getting the football and either advancing it the other way or just getting possession and turning it over to their offense. That can be a little bit deflating. You're exactly right, a lost opportunity. Second and six, just inside the 30. Now a shotgun snap as they'll look to throw. And his throw is going to be incomplete. Just work with me a second here because in my lifetime, seeing how quarterback percentages have changed in throwing the football, I mean, back in the good old days, if you were around 50%, you were doing okay. But now, you need to be 65 to 70% to be considered an elite quarterback. And in this ball game, I feel like we're playing old school, right around 50%. Yeah, he's under 50%. He needs to start hitting more targets. So after the second down incompletion, they'll come up now against a third and six. They'll look to throw here. And it's going to be incomplete. He was able to catch it there on the right sideline, but out of bounds, says the line judge. And it's going to bring up fourth down. Another drive comes and goes, still nothing on the scoreboard. Yeah, and when the second half comes, you, you know, it's real easy to get discouraged and wonder if you're ever going to get things started. You just got to fight through it. Got to keep pounding away. The Falcons send out their punter as he'll come on to kick this one away. And no return on this one as the fair catch is signaled for and taken. A 40-yard punt, no return. And the Vikings will take over here first and 10. Now the Vikings offense gets set to take over here. And last time out, another touchdown. I think there may be some empty seats around here by the time the fourth quarter comes around. Yeah, I have to agree with you because this one's just about decided. But you know who benefits from all those empty seats? Who? You and me, <laughs> trying to get to the airport. Yeah, the road to be fairly clear <laughs> that is by the one time positive. we have to leave the booth. And an alley to run. And he'll push his way forward to about the 32. He'll get a nice chunk there on the first down run, and it's second and four. Third quarter, and you've got the lead. You're not ready to go into that four-minute offense to close the game out, but a running game can really benefit your team right now. And they'll go ground game here with a tailback. And five yards on the play there as the drive will continue. They're trying to show that they can run the ball and protect this lead. Give it to the backs, play a little bit of keep away, don't you think? And that's probably a good philosophy at this point, going to make that defense stand up and stop them. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Let's go! And they'll go with a ground attack here. And he puts his head down and gets up to the 42 for a gain of about six. Let's talk a little football 101 here because one of the keys to advancing the ball downfield, success on first down. Huge difference, as we know, between second and four and second and eight and nine. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he'll work it across midfield inside the 45. They give him 14 yards that time and a fresh set of downs. Well, that last run makes this a 100-yard night. I've loved the way he's hit the holes. He's been quick. He's been decisive. 
and he's been a whole lot of fun to watch. First downs has the football positioned at the 43 as they come up first and 10. Here we go. Grand 38. Grand 38. <laughs> They'll run it now out of the gun. Breaks through the contact. 20. offense continues to pour it on. And he certainly played a pivotal role with those two TDs and why they're up on the scoreboard right now. Well, someone's all about winning, aren't they? Because he's not worried about the number. Sure, it's great to have two touchdowns. But the bottom line is what he's doing is contributing to their lead. He wants to continue to do so. Point after try, forthcoming. Delay of game, offense. And that'll set him back five. Extra point attempt here still to come. Point after, right down the middle. And the lead will swell by one more. Five plays there on that drive. And the finishing touch was that nice long run into the end zone. The kickoff unit is out on the field, and they will send this one away. So out come the Falcons now. These guys had to punt last time. It has not been a very fruitful game offensively thus far. They haven't even made a trip to the red zone. And I know that everyone's going crazy on that sideline because that drives you berserk to come off the field, not really move the ball well. As you said, not even get to the red zone, let alone, you know, not even put points on the board. They've got to just take a deep breath, relax, try to figure out what is working, and call more of that. Got his man complete over the middle. That's Hall. And he'll get it up to the 33-yard line. A good pick up there. Eight yards on the first down completion. Fired that one in there, able to make connection on a nice in route. With those faster passes when they're going that fast, any hesitation as a quarterback that the deflection, if you miss, might be bigger and lead to an interception? Yeah, and the deflection works both ways. Maybe a defender gets a hand in the way and it pops in the air, and sometimes you throw it so hard your receiver can't handle it, and he pops it up in the air for the defenders to grab as well. But a moot point there is they were able to connect. Here's a second and two now from the 33. All right, here we go. And they'll try the ground game here with the running back. And he went backwards. He'll be down at the 30. They'll wind up losing three. And now it's third down. He continues to struggle to find a crease to break off a big one and might need to just put that aside and just try and ram his way forward and get what he can. The Falcons on third down. A pretty woeful 0 for 5 thus far. This will be third and 5. All right, here we go. 3 19. 3 19. They'll set up a throw. Looking left side, and it's complete. 
And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. A good pick up there of 20 yards. He's such a good route runner. Shows it there on third down. Very proficient and a good pass. And you know what I've observed over the years in the NFL? The better a route runner you are, the more confidence your guy's going to have in you to go to you in important times because he can trust you being in the right spot. And they connected there and picked up a first down. Nothing in that first half, nothing on the last drive, but they're moving now with a first and 10. And that is going to do it for this third quarter of action. We'll return with more after this. This is the NFL, and it's on EA Sports. And we return welcoming you back to Minneapolis. And this is a blowout so far as we get set for the fourth quarter. A very one-sided affair. Now let's go! From the midfield strike, they'll look to throw. And he will find his man on the end route, complete. And past the 35, he'll be dropped a yard or two shy of the 30. Another big hitter there. This one good for 18. Hard to believe his first catch of the game defensively. They bottled him up. That's why they're well on their way to victory. Put your best cover guy on him and then change the coverages behind him throughout the game. Brackets, double, zone, man, you name it. Make sure he gets a lot of angles. This quarterback now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and ten. Here's a play fake as they set up to throw. And lucky to get away with one there. That one nearly picked. Second down. Another wayward pass. You know, things started out poorly in this game, and to be frank, they just really haven't gotten much better. And all that does is emboldened in the secondary. They feel good about what's going on, and they just play better and better. Here's second and 10 now from about the 32. Hurry up, here we go. They'll run it now out of the gun. And he struggles to get a yard here, maybe a yard, down to the 31. Seems pretty obvious defensively a key was stopping the run game. How have they done it so successfully? To me, it seems that these guys really did a nice job of paying attention during the scouting report meeting. And you know, Brandon, when they do those, they talk about the top plays that these guys like to Let's run. Go. The best runs Green, for the top nine. running back. Green. Those are the ones you focus on and want to take away. And they've done that pretty successfully. And he's going to be taken down. Pressure gets there back at the 39-yard line. We've been around this league for a while, and many coaches never pull their starting quarterback, almost no matter the situation. In this case, though, I think he's got to make a decision. He's taking a pretty good beating out there. Yeah, and with the deficit, maybe not wanting to risk an injury. The Falcons send out their punter as he's on to punt for the fourth time tonight. 44 on his first punt, and this is a good kick as well. Now the Minnesota offense set to take over again. With this lead and the football, things obviously looking good, but maybe, yeah, you've taught me this before, maybe this is where the defense is hoping that the offense helps them preserve that shutout that they've got going. And it has to be in the minds of the offense that they know how rare it is to get a shutout. So take care of them, protect them, take care of the ball, move it downfield, run the clock down. You don't want your defense to have to go on the field again the rest of the game. Reward them. And he'll get this up to the 30-yard line. This drive starting off on the right foot, 18 yards. 
Do my eyes deceive me, or is he getting stronger as this game moves along? First seems just as good here in the fourth as it was way back in the first, doesn't it? I do believe someone put a lot of time in in the offseason and continues to condition during the season in order to continue to carry the ball at this rate. So first and 10 now from the 30. Right back to him on first down. And he'll get this up only to about the 33. A gain of three, second down. Bottom line, they want to keep this clock rolling, so they'll take that one right there. They just want to keep falling forward, and they want to put the onus on the big fellas up front in order to bring this one home. And they'll run it here. And he'll get two, maybe three, up near the 37. A big part of a middle linebacker's job is being able to take on blocks and then go make plays. But the best ones, they have those big guys in front of them playing defensive line to hold blockers off of them and allow them to flow sideline to sideline and make the big hits. He'll look to throw. And he can't quite pick it. No interception so far. That probably should have been their first. But at least it's fourth down. Oh, man, that was close. The opportunity to change momentum. Big play right in his hands. Unable to come down with it. A sigh of relief, no doubt, on offense that that fell harmlessly to the ground. The Vikings send out their punter as he's on to kick it away. And that hits at the six and carries into the end zone for a touchback. And here now come the Falcons. These guys had to punt their last possession, and that's become too familiar of a refrain. Too many of these drives just wound up going nowhere. Well, you know how in baseball, when the pitcher gets a base hit and he's on base, they bring his jacket out to him to keep him warm? A lot of times, the punter goes to the sideline, puts on sweatpants or a wrap over his leg to keep it warm. He might need a massage from the trainer right now <laughs> right, from all the work he's getting. Blue Blue They'll try and start this drive in the air. He's got his tight end on the corner route. It's complete. And they work this well upfield across the 45. A really good pickup of 28 yards. Nice game there, partner. But you and I both know that won't do anything for the final score. They're not going to win this one. Right now, they're playing for pride and fantasy points. <laughs> and just to erase that goose egg, nobody wants to be shut out. This quarterback now perfect since the second half started. Seven of seven. It's first and ten. Hurry up, here we go. Three, nineteen. Three, nineteen. Now back to throw toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. All right, that one fell incomplete there, but the best quarterbacks, they'll miss on 40% of their throws somewhere in that neighborhood, similar to a great hitter in baseball who's going to fail seven out of ten times and still have a great year. In this case, you want perfection, but way better than it hits the ground instead of going to an opposite color jersey. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Set, three, 19. He'll drop to throw. And it's intercepted. Picked off at the 38. And they have possession, and they have it at the 38-yard line. This spot in the fourth quarter with that deficit had to throw the football. Unfortunately, there's the risk of big turnover. And you know you're going to be throwing against nickel, dime, all sorts of exotic defenses, but you have to do it anyway. Ordinarily, you might want to run the football a little bit, try and get them out of it. But as you noted, this time of the game, this point on the clock,
had to throw it. And now out comes Minnesota. We've got a lopsided game here. I don't know, Charles, what does the handbook say that we, <laughs> we discuss when we've got a game like this in the fourth quarter? Hold on a second. Let me, let me thumb to the proper page on that. Know what it says? What? Let's discuss how we got here. This is a dominant performance. Where they took control of this game. How they've managed to keep control of this game. And then we go ahead and think about how we're going to leave here and get to the airport. In a lopsided blowout, the roads are usually open. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. That's it. That's what you want. Straight ahead, positive gain. Just keep that clock ticking. Time for a break. This one, all over but the shouting. We'll finish it after this. So the Vikings in possession of the football as we get you reset. And let's see what they've come up with offensively after having time to talk it over. And on the ground they go with a running back. Two yards the gain there, and now they're left with a third and about four for a first. Well, that didn't appear to be a run blitz. He just darted in once he saw the run develop. That appeared to be a case of see ball, get ball. The Vikings on third down. Three for seven so far in this game. This is third and four. Let's go! White 90! White 90! Back to throw here. And he's going to drop this off to his fullback. And he's got the first down yardage before being taken down at midfield. It's a pickup of six and good enough to move the chains. Now that's often a surprise for the defensive guys when they see the big fella slide out of the backfield and catch the ball. Not something they usually go over in practice very often. This quarterback now, five straight completions here in this second half, first and ten. They'll run it now, out of the gun. And he's over midfield and into Falcon territory. Give him three on first down. It'll set up a second and seven. Not much happening there on first down. I thought there might have been a hole for a split second. Yeah, but it dried up pretty quickly, didn't it? Closed fast. way forward here for a modest gain. Paoli Kikaha with a tackle. And the storyline of this one, Charles, no doubt the number zero. Zilch, nada. A shutout so hard to do in the NFL. It really is. And what an accomplishment because you feel that not just on the defensive side, but as a full team, there's a lot of pride that goes into shutting out an opponent. And how about that zero on the scoreboard for them going along with those zeros in the time column too. So that'll just about do it for Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gordon. You've been watching the NFL on EA Sports. For more, log on to easports.com. It's a win for the Vikings as we say so long from Minneapolis.